we're going to be talking with Safe Nest. Uh, Safe Nest is based in Las Vegas, and we have with us today Jennifer Espinal, who is the Director of Crisis Support. Hello. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Your program is, we cannot say enough things about what you're doing. It is so important, and I'm wondering if you could just share a little bit about it. Uh, first, the scope. What? Wh who is it that you are providing support to? So we provide uh, support for uh, victims of domestic violence as well as sexual assault. Okay, and, and who qualifies? Who is it that calls for assistance? Um, anyone that's pretty much in need um, that reaches out, um, even if, let's say, they don't necessarily are not exactly going through um, domestic violence at the time, like we provide services to everybody um, or we get them connected with um, other agencies that might be able to help them um, with those resources if it's not something that we're able to provide. Excellent. So do they call you directly? Do they call 911? How do they call for help? So it's both. We have um, people that will call us directly. They will call into our hotline um, and they will also call into Metro. So it really just kind of depends on what the situation is. There isn't one way um, that people will reach out. So if they call in through Metro, um, of course, we'll go ahead and get the information either through dispatch or our Metro officers. Um, and sometimes they'll call us directly and that might lead to the opposite way where we may have to go ahead and get them on the line with Metro officers at the same time that we are triaging that. Okay, that's fantastic. So, so walk us through it. How does it happen when, uh, when it comes through Metro police? Okay, so, um, when they go ahead and get um, a domestic violence call, um, officers are out on scene, they'll go ahead and make the assessment where then they'll go over the air and they will reach out to dispatch um, and dispatch will go ahead and then contact my hotline advocates um, if they are needing an advocate out on scene. Now, sometimes officers will actually call us directly as well. Um, either way is perfectly fine. And do they ever show up on scene when police is not there? No, um, that is something officers for our program have to be on scene um, in order for us to have an advocate um, there. Okay, so you have specific protocols when you will send them yeah. out and when you don't. Absolutely. Excellent. And so how many advocates do you currently have on your, on your roster? Um, so we've got about 13 um, paid advocates and we've got about, I want to say about 60 volunteers that we dispatch out. And, and when someone calls into SafeNest, either police or they call directly, how do you decide who's going to go with so many responders? So there is um, a sign up. Um, so our, of course our advocates are, they're working, their schedule. So they are always available. Um, our volunteers, they sign up for shifts and we do go ahead and dispatch out our volunteers first. We have through um, the Beacon app, we have them assigned to different area commands on where they're located because they dispatch from home. So on their shift, they might be in the Northwest, let's say area. And if we get a call that comes in from over there to make sure that we are cutting down um, that response time for an ETA for our officers, um, we will dispatch out the closest advocate available. And, and this is from a call, your call center? Yes. Excellent, okay, so, so you will pick specific responders to go uh, you know exactly who is on shift and, and who needs to go? Absolutely. Um, so like I said, our volunteers dispatch from home and we have them when they are logged in, they have a tag listed 
um, in what area they are in Las Vegas. And so we're able, when we take the calls from dispatch or from an officer, we get what area command they are in. Um, this way it better helps us triage um, which advocate we can send out to them um, that is in the closest area. So you break it down by geography to get someone there, whoever's closest. Do you, yes. do you have specific uh, time, times that you're trying to get them on scene? Um, we try for a 20 minute response. Um, where our office is pretty much centrally located. Um, so it usually takes about 20 minutes, give or take, of course, this is having to take into consideration with uh, rush hour traffic and stuff, but it definitely has helped um, with our volunteers that are in, you know, with them dispatching from home, they're already in those different area commands. Um, so that response time has definitely cut down quite a bit. So the goal is 20 minutes, but you're yes. definitely shooting for below that as, as often as possible. Absolutely. And did you decide 20 minutes or was that police? How, how did you come to the 20 minute uh, goal? That, it's usually about 20 minutes, give or take, to get um, to these different areas um, is what we just kind of uh, were able to assess um, when we launched the program and we were looking at what our response times were. So it was definitely something that we... Um, we're tracking to go ahead and see. And then at the same time, it's to go ahead and we've, the easiest way is to go ahead and we're trying to cut out from if officers get a priority call, we definitely wanna just make sure that we're able to um, meet the victims where they're at. Um, and we know that just kind of with everything that's going on, you know, different things happen. And this also, helps for you know our clients that you know they're they can get nervous right. um and of course the sooner we can get someone there um the easier it is not only for officers but for our victims right so so you send out one of your advocates at a time and they're mm -hmm. on scene with a police officer and what 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 do they do when they get on scene what are they providing so really we're meeting the uh, victims where they're at. So it's, we're finding out um, basically when our advocates get on scene, first we're meeting with officers to kind of see what happened. Was there an arrest made? And if there is, then we're gonna go ahead and we have a little bit better of an idea of some services that we may go ahead and provide. Um, and then when we're meeting with the clients, it might go ahead and we're seeing what it is that they're needing. Are they looking for counseling? Are they looking to get an emergency protection order, which is something that our agency does when um, there's an arrest made? Um, if there wasn't an arrest made, maybe um, the perpetrator fled the scene. Um, we also go ahead and we'll help them do a temporary protection order. Um, are they looking for shelter? Um, are they looking, do they have an open case um, in the courts right now? We have our different departments that work in, uh, for civil court. If they are having, again, to do the protection order, they're going through divorce, they're going through custody, um, or there might be a preliminary hearing that they already have going on um, in our justice court. So we're just kind of finding out what it is um, that our victims are um, looking for. These are services that we provide. And to be honest, sometimes because we are meeting them in that moment of trauma, um, it might be a lot to process and they might not know what it is that they want. And in that case, we have a small card that we provide so that they know that they can call our hotline 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and my advocates will provide the same services by phone um, if they're unsure, um, if they wanna do anything at that moment or you know, other things are going on and they might be trying to get their children settled. 
Um, so they may want to give us a call later. Um, and so, you know, again, it's just meeting our clients where they're at um, and what their needs are. Um, and if it's not at that moment, then, um, you know, we're able to meet those needs even after. Right. So in this case, resolution can come in all sorts of different ways. Yes. There's not one. We take them to a shelter and then and wrap it up. This, this can be an ongoing thing. Absolutely. This also kind of coincides too is sometimes our advocates can go on scene and um, based off of the injuries, they might be getting transported to the hospital. Um, so of course, if they're meeting with detectives, if they are getting transported, um, you know, by EMTs, what we'll go ahead and do is um, from that point, um, we might have another call. So maybe that advocate is dispatched out to another call. But what we will do is the social workers at the hospitals, officers that accompany them can give us a call when we do have access um, to our clients and we will dispatch out another advocate, even if it's hours later to go um, in person to the hospitals um, and sit down and talk with them incredible work you're doing um can you just one last question what what uh how many responses do you have on average per day per week per month um gosh that is a kind of a hard one to go and say i would say last month for february i want to say it was about 3000 and like 515 responses. That's a huge number. Yes, that wow. need is very great. And currently you're in Las Vegas. Are there, I mean, this sounds like a program that could be used in many locations. Are you, are there any plans for scaling? Um, we are right now we are, um, we provide services to Clark County um, and possibly we may be expanding out. Um, there's always a possibility for North Las Vegas as well as Henderson. Um, it's definitely gotten around enough and it, it definitely helps out officers um, to put an advocate you know, um, at the time of that trauma and getting those services um, and you know, even if they're not utilizing it at that moment, it still plants that seed that there are those services um, for them, um, for them. And if it's their children, um, for some people, it might be family members um, that might take the information if the client's not ready. So it's definitely, it helps officers tremendously to go ahead and um, be able to put an advocate there and for us to provide those services. Fantastic, uh, it's such, a, such an important service you're providing. Thank you, thank you, Jen, for sharing.